I've been noticing a lot more CPU limited performance in gaming lately, and I've been, you know, this morning I started just playing around with some numbers uh, to see if I could justify, I, I think that GPUs are getting way faster than CPUs at gaming specifically. And I'm just curious what that me might mean for the future. So let's go ahead and talk about what sort of uh, data am I looking at here? Now, this is just what I could throw together this morning, but we've got a couple of graphs here. Uh, the first one is uh, G GPU performance over time since about 2015. And the other one is the best I could throw together this morning for not CPU performance over time, but gaming performance of the CPU over time. And it seems like gaming GPU performance is growing at a much faster rate than gaming CPU performance. And um, first of all, where am I even getting this data? Because I'm gonna admit right now, this is not perfect. The GPU data I think is pretty good. Um, so I've taken this from the relative performance chart over at Tech Power Up, and I just grabbed the 980 Ti as you know the most powerful uh, GPU of 2015. And then um, basically then I, I looked at over time, we've got the 1080 Ti, the 2080 Ti, the 3090 and the 4090. And um, they give us this relative performance as a percentage. And I wanna be clear that this is not perfect, um, especially as these get you know further apart in time and things like that. Um, and if you look at specific games and workloads and resolutions and all that, these will diverge from these exact numbers but I think this gets us a fairly decent ballpark idea of how gaming GPU performance uh, is gaining over time as we get um, high-end GPUs of each new generation. Now, um, the uh, model I'm then getting here, this exponential graph, I just used the Desmos graphing calculator here because I'm a math teacher and that's what I do. Uh, <laughs> And I just made a quick uh, exponential regression. So I took this data set and I asked it to make a, uh, a basic exponential function, um, uh, do a regression, generate that. So this is telling me that it's like 27% growth rate per year, uh, roughly since, 27, uh, s since 2015. And again, we get a new GPU generation more like every two years. So that's why it's actually more than that generation on generation for the most part. Anyway. So that's where I got those numbers. Now, the CPU stuff took me way longer to generate anything for, and I'm also less confident in this being particularly accurate, but I do think it's accurate enough just for this kind of, this video uh, about the topic, which is, um, so, so I just wanted to illustrate that I think the gaming performance of CPUs is increasing way slower than the gaming performance of GPUs. Now, I was trying to find if anybody had compared the last, you know, 10 years or so of, uh, of gaming CPUs in gaming performance at the same time. Now, the best thing I could find was from Gamers Nexus, uh, where they did 10 years of Intel CPUs gaming. It's exactly what I was looking for. The problem is that the video came out in 2020. Uh, so the data set didn't go all the way up until like the 13900K. However, I did pop over to the 13900K review from Gamers Nexus, and they do still test Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p medium settings. So I could take these as, you know, somewhat comparable, although I will admit that these were tested on different GPUs. So, and these were tested at a different point in time. Um, you know, the rest of the system, obviously, anyway, but I'm just saying that these are not gonna be as good of a um, comparison as I could find on the GPUs, but I still think it's somewhat relevant. And also, before any of you guys are like, okay, um, CPUs have gotten way more gain from, from, from 2015 till, till now. It's not just this times two performance. Keep in mind, what I'm talking about here is gaming performance because that's part of my whole uh, thought process of this video is I'm thinking about the fact that um, CPU performance has been getting much better over time and at a much faster rate than what you're seeing in this graph. But a lot of that overall CPU performance comes from adding more cores and more threads. The thing is that in a gaming workload, most of those cores and threads on the highest end CPUs 
are not being utilized. And some people argue that that's poor game optimization, but I would say that, well, in some cases, I think it is poor optimization and more threads uh, should be utilized and the CPU re uh, resources should be utilized better. I don't think that's always the case because in general, what a GPU is doing in a game and what a CPU is doing in a game are not the same thing. Uh, and what a GPU does is much easier to parallelize. In other words, with GPUs, throwing more cores at the problem is generally a great solution to the problem. And obviously, gaming GPUs have had more advancements than just fitting more cores on the die. Don't get me wrong. But in general, you can just throw more cores at the problem with the graphics workload. Because, I mean, think about it like this. I mean, obviously I'm oversimplifying this. I'm also not a game developer, but a GPU is basically its job is to determine what color each pixel on your screen is, right? <laughs> like that, in the end, that's what it's doing. And so if you have a, a ton of pixels and you need to determine what color they are, then you can throw lots of cores at that problem. So different cores can work on different Pixel colors. I mean, I'm obviously grossly oversimplifying it, but that's the rough idea of what's going on there. It's easy to parallelize the problem, meaning make lots of cores work on the problem at the same time and output that result together, and it, and it increases our performance. Whereas gaming CPUs, in a, C, in, in a game, the CPU is doing a lot of things, but they're not necessarily as easy to parallelize. There might be some main like world thread for the game that has a lot to do with, you know, where, what everything, uh, you know, how, how the physics is working on the screen or like where everything is in relation to each other. And again, I'm not, um, I don't want to get too much into the details here. Cause again, I'm not a game developer. So I, I you know, I, I can't get too accurate on the details, but the point is that like, for example, as the resolution of the game increases, you get more pixels on the screen and a GPU can then just, uh, can easy, it can be easier to then parallelize that problem to more cores. Whereas changing the resolution of the game doesn't really affect the CPU as much, or if at all, because the kinds of things it's calculating, um, you know, don't uh, get calculated per pixel. And then also, um, Talking to people who know more about this than I do, I've asked about, you know, is it just bad optimization when a game can't use all of the, you know, you know, maybe you have a 16 core 32 thread processor. Is it just bad optimization that the game can't use those? And the response I get from people more knowledgeable than me on the topic is that, well, at, a, at some point, all of the, the work the CPU is doing has to kind of come back together, right? To, to, to keep, to all stay in sync. And the more you try to split all of that apart into different threads in parallel, the harder it can be for all of that to stay in sync and the more work, like, like there's a case of, it's, it becomes very difficult and with diminishing returns for a lot of things to try to be split, uh, split apart into more cores on the CPU. And so I guess what I'm saying then is while CPUs are increasing in performance over time at a faster rate uh, they're increasing, their overall multi-threaded performance is increasing at a faster rate than games can take advantage of it. And so the gaming performance of a CPU is often mostly determined by how fast each core has improved over the previous generation. So if your, if your CPU architecture is only 20% faster at its single threaded performance than the previous generation, even if you doubled the cores, right? Um, then you don't actually see a doubling of the frame rate that the game can produce. It's gonna be closer to that 20% number from the single threaded performance uplift, right? Now, so I wanted to kind of visualize this and explain it. Um, but then I wanted to get into a little bit of honestly, just kind of like, let's just think about where this is going, right? Because, so let's say our next generation of CPUs also only gives us another 20% or so of, of performance. But, you know, our GPU performance over time recently has been going up like crazy. Now, I'm also curious if it can continue increasing at this rate 
Because part of what they've done is, is like the power consumption of these things and their physical size has been increasing um, as well, right? And at some point it just can't fit in the case and a home can't throw enough power at it, right? <laughs> Um, so you've got, maybe this needs to slow down at some point. Um, but you know, how fast is the 5090 going to be? And if we see a similar jump of the 5090 over the 4090, as we saw from the 4090 over the 3090, I mean, how far off of, uh, you know, how much can the CPU keep up, I guess, right? Now, um, does the CPU need to keep up? I mean, like I said, we've been seeing CPU limited performance in a lot of situations. And it used to be that people would say, well, uh, it doesn't matter if you're at a higher resolution. And I think that used to be true, but with GPUs like the 4090, um, and then with, with things like ray tracing, actually having, that's something that does have a big impact on CPU performance in games. And this is one thing where I think optimization may be a thing. Um, where I think some games seem to be better able to optimize the CPU workload of ray tracing, because I've seen in games recently like Callisto Protocol and Hogwarts Legacy, to name a couple, but it happens in others as well. Um, the CPU performance when ray tracing enabled just becomes heavily limited at a frame rate that's you know playable on a high-end uh, CPU, rough on a lower-end CPU, and like really not giving you the types of high frame rates that you would like on a high-end system uh, where you'd be using the ray tracing in the first place. Anyway, but I guess what I'm getting at is um, how much faster can GPUs get before we're just completely bogged down by the CPU? And over time, I think this has always been a thing, but I think one thing that that has solved this problem over time is the more powerful GPUs are targeting a higher resolution for the monitor. And again, throwing more pixels at the GPU uses up its resources, right? So it keeps things in line. Um, and we've gone from, you know, 720p being a reasonable gaming resolution to 1080p being like amazing. And now 1440p is getting a lot more common. And on the highest end systems, I understand that 4K PC gaming is still you know, a small part of the market, but um, people buying these highest end GPUs might be more likely to be at a resolution like 4K. I think a lot of people with a 4090 are playing at 4K, that kind of a thing. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is, are we gonna actually see a movement towards 8K? Is that gonna be a thing? Because honestly, at some point, you do just have enough pixels, you know, unless your screens get huge, right? Uh, like, honestly, when I'm playing on my 4K 48-inch uh, OLED um, uh, screen, and I'm sitting pretty close to it, I actually think I could use an 8K screen. But that's a massive, massive screen for a monitor to be sitting close to, right? And I, and I really don't think um, that's going to be a normal use case for many people. Um, uh, anytime soon, like the amount of desk space you need for a screen, uh, the size where we're going up to 8K, I think is relevant, <laughs> um, is kind of silly. So if the number of pixels is gonna stop going up, um, or at least maybe not as rapidly as we've seen, like is 4K enough on, on a desktop, right? <laughs> is that enough? Then where does this extra GPU performance go, right? Um, you, if you just throw it to higher frame rate, the CPU, this is where it might not be able to keep up, right? Um, and then you just become CPU limited. So then I guess it goes into, I guess the ultra settings on the games can just crank things even higher. Um, but where does that go? If, if we're talking ray tracing, we've been seeing ray tracing increase the CPU workload. Um, and, and that's then become often the, the, the limit. And so then we've got things like, um, I think NVIDIA might have seen this coming with things like DLSS3 frame generation, where they're like, well, dang it, um, you know, our GPUs are getting better and better at ray tracing, but the CPU can't keep up. So things like frame generation kind of shortcut this solution by just not, not having the CPU and the game engine generate more frames. They have the, uh, they just insert frames in between the actual game engine frames, and then those aren't tied to the CPU. So it increases your frame rate, but it doesn't really increase the game's performance. It doesn't become more responsive uh, because those those frames aren't really part of the game engine. I've done other other videos on this topic, but it's that's one interesting 
a place to go with what to do with the C with the GPU when we're um, when we're CPU limited. Um, <laughs> Um, but like I said, I mean, I guess overall the graphics um, could get, um, you know, like I said, they're, they're ultra settings of some kind. You know, you could just throw uh, more demanding stuff at the GPUs, I guess, to kind of rein this in. But I thought this was an interesting stat. And I'm curious what you guys think about the future of all of this. Um, am I right here? Like, I, I really think that, that GPU performance is completely eclipsing, you know, just developing at such a faster rate than, than CPU performance. And we're getting at a limit of just throwing more pixels at the GPU. Um, so I'm just curious where this goes from here. I guess maybe VR is a place where you could use a lot of um, uh, pixels on, on, the, on the monitor, you know, that kind of thing. But anyway, I feel like I'm just rambling at this point. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. Uh, I just thought this was interesting to look at, played around with it this morning on Desmos. So I hope all of you have an excellent day.